Hi, welcome everybody. You see Dorothy Morgan is with me and this is nice. day one of the nine blue candles and we're going to be following sort of progression of ideas around this blue energy that hit us in November that everybody's talking about. And uh, Dorothy and I were discussing it a little bit off camera where we felt it was going to happen. And my feeling is that a lot of it's going to come from the fact that we've never had this energy before. And at mm -hmm. the same time, we're going through some changes astrologically we haven't had before. Yeah. So but yeah. before we get to that, I want to do the uh, light the candle. Dorothy gets one little candle. Yay. It's all right. <laughs> Y'all. I got a new thing. It's it's a lazy Susan. It's like a lazy I, Susan. I, Good I, job. I got tired of burning my arms. And um, oh, my kids fabulous. said, you have got to find a way to do this so the house isn't going to burn down. Yeah. That was their one request. That was uh, two years ago that I almost burnt the house down. It's a good request. Um, <laughs> anyway, the crystal I picked, you know, I always picked, this is angelite. And it is a beautiful, soft, blue and it's been formed into this sort of almost imitation of a quartz top. And it's attached. This, when you see rock attached to the crystally part, that's the matrix. And it, this is rising out of its matrix. And I picked it because it's a beautiful blue stone and it's pointed. And when stones are pointed, they're sending their energy out. But it is it's a stone that helps us accept the energy in our own bodies. So I thought that was a good one for this thing. So I'm going to read the meditation that we look at. Mm -hmm. The act of lighting these candles serves as a metaphorical beacon, guiding our spirits to the next level of existence and fostering a deeper connection with the universe. The blue light special upgrade, which is my words for this, <laughs> signifies a transformative experience where our spirits become the catalyst for strengthening universal connections. During this ritual, we can focus our intentions on personal growth, spiritual enlightenment, aligning our energies with the natural rhythms of the planet. It's a time of introspection and envisioning our desired futures and seeking harmony with the world around us. A time to celebrate the growth and balance of the collective. By balancing, by embracing this ritual, we acknowledge the interconnections of our life on earth, channeling that awareness to elevate our own spiritual journey. It's a beautiful way to celebrate and embrace the cyclical nature of existence while seeking our own personal and collective growth. So we're going to light candle one. There you go. Right. And... Like I said, one of the things that when I was focusing on what does this blue light stuff do, mm -hmm. it's that it's bringing a new universal energy in. It follows the photonic waves that came in in 2017 and the different waves of energy. And uh, one of the things I've learned is science kind of always accepts stuff it can measure. I don't know how much they measured the blue light hitting the planet, but how it hits each of us is very individual because it's like I kept telling people in the, in the last few years as psychic awareness has grown and people who follow us has grown. Dorothy and I've talked about this at times. Mm -hmm. If you've been enlightened and you've been in the, if you've been in the waves of energy and you felt them, they're not such a big kick in the butt when they hit. Now for people who've been, hiding in their psychic closets and hoping that they won't be outed. Uh, I don't think this one's going to give you much room. So they're <laughs> going to feel it more and they're yeah. going to come out saying, Oh my God, I'm going to have to talk. I'm going to talk about this stuff. It almost becomes, a, you're almost compelled to because you can't keep it inside. And right. so Dorothy's going to talk about what the planets are saying towards us about those kinds of changes. And one of the things that, several of the people who've looked at this and one of the things I saw when I saw it during, around the eclipse, when I saw the blue web coming down towards us, is it was going to change the energy in the entire planet. And that includes every little bit of energy in our body, which is the DNA mm -hmm. and the genetics of us. So right. with those small issues at hand, 
<laughs> I know. And before I even do that, one thing I was having this conversation with somebody else because just a, a friend, a dear friend and a colleague about the blue light and how it was coming down on these three different days and all of those things, you know, in November. Mm -hmm. But um, it was interesting because anybody who wears glasses now, mm -hmm. there's a protective coating on your glasses to block the blue light because the blue mm -hmm. light is bad for your eyes. Mm -hmm. The blue light that comes off our phones, that comes off the computer mm -hmm. screens, things like that. And I'm just like, there's a correlation there or is there just putting that out there. Yeah. It's not like a conspiracy of government not wanting us to feel the blue light. It's not mm -hmm. that. And so I honestly, scientifically, I think it is something that is, you know, they've recognized, but I want you to think about it too. Right. Whatever that means in your own life. If you're wearing glasses, like I do for everything, I can see nothing without my glasses. That means the blue light is being um, deflected. For me, for my eyes anyways, mm -hmm. but I love blue glass. I have blue glass in my windows. I love this color blue. It's just mm -hmm. always a fave for me. So just keep that in mind. It's just an interesting little, hmm, I wonder, what mm -hmm. does that mean? Process it in your own place, in your own way, because I think that is interesting. And then when I look at Aquarius, now I know zodiac signs have colors, and I can't list them off because it's just somebody's opinion. I, there's, there's no proof. But to me, when I think of Aquarius... And mm -hmm. we're talking about DNA and we're talking about like universal changes that this can bring to light for all of us. Mm -hmm. um, Aquarius is an air sign. And to me in the Northern hemisphere, especially this it, Aquarius comes through in winter. Right. And here up North <laughs> winter is cold and the ice is blue, right? When there's mm -hmm. snow and there's ice, it's blue. So it just, Aquarius reminds me of blue, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that that is just a nice little correlation too. But that being said, the Aquarius energy that has, you know, that we are, you know, here to work with um, right. Uranus uh, is in Taurus, which has been in Taurus for um, quite a few years now, since 2018. And that in an earth sign, but that's just helping us to see things differently and it's bringing to light the major issues that we have around the planet on planet qual planet issues. Right. Mm -hmm. And then just this year, earlier this year, we had Pluto enter Aquarius for just a short minute, right. For just a few weeks. And it's back in Capricorn until January 20th, 2024. Mm -hmm. So Aquarius, you know, once Pluto moves into Aquarius again, when we get to January 20th, 2024, you know, we're all starting, that's going to be even a bigger vibe, if you will, as to moving us forward mm -hmm. and into uh, new technology and just new ways of seeing and doing things. But in the mm -hmm. meantime, while we have the energy of like the blue light coming in, whatever that, again, however that resonates for you on your level of ascension and understanding, um, I think the astrology is following up with that, just giving us opportunities to release what isn't part of our lives anymore. And you hear us say that all the time at full moons, just release what's no longer working. But I'm telling you on a very deep level, we absolutely need to be taking steps towards letting go of what doesn't work, letting, you know, like hiding in the closet, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. there are some of our souls past lives, we're still afraid to speak up because we were chastised or murdered or burned or drowned, you know, because mm -hmm. of being the energetic beings we were, you know, witches is what I'm really right. thinking of. But the, even that heretic, whatever, mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to do is look at, oh, look at the past. Actually, just being a woman sometimes wasn't a good thing. Yeah, being a woman and, is being a heretic to them. I know. <laughs> oh, I, know I know. thought they were going to come from, but I know where they're going to go from. It's like, anyways, but it's um just all of those things. I know we've covered a whole lot in five seconds right there, but to me, it's it is about those things. It's 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 about we we are moving away from some a seriously old patriarchal type system, and Pluto right now moving through the last bits of Capricorn, and it will do it again in um, September first to November 20th in 2024. So we're going to have mm -hmm. another couple of weeks of it. Just stay tuned. Watch my channel. I talk about this stuff all the mm -hmm. time.
And, um, but when Pluto gets into that Aquarius, January 20th, 2024, we're all, all bets are off on the old things that aren't working anymore. Mm -hmm. So you guys listening, you know, you know, dig in, dig in the blue vibe, start working with it, start realizing what you can energetically move uh, move towards and, and, and have an open mind because the Aquarius that's here, the Aquarius that's coming energy, which rules our DNA, rules mm-hmm. our genetics, rules the high tech, rules a higher vibration, like, you know, sound as well. Mm-hmm. Um, play with those things so you can start releasing and breaking things off, kind of like just, you know, getting rid of a scab, you know, just sort mm-hmm. of shedding like we shed our skin just slowly shedding what isn't belonging to us and just be aware of that and make that conscious choice that you're going to do that but don't force anything don't force it because if we're saying we're taking naturally going to be taking steps towards a new vibration towards higher understanding opening our minds and our hearts and our souls to things that are just new and very different and then that will give us the, and, and that will, we'll just naturally leave and shed what isn't, what, what we don't need. But if we fight this, that's when it's difficult. Yeah. That's when it's difficult. That's when it feels really hard. So it's a natural process. If we're here, if we're here, if you're listening, you're here. And that means you're already, you're already getting it. And if you're listening to our channels, right. Like Nancy Jean and I were talking before we started recording. It's like if you know you're listening, then you already you already understand a lot of this. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're just waking up and you're just getting this like first time seeing our channels or whatever, you're you know you're going to be new at this, and and it's just going to be um, it'll be a fun ride. <laughs> that is well, and you got to realize they're going to be someone's going to wake up, and Pluto's going to have moved into Aquarius, mm-hmm. and they're going to have no recollection of looking or contemplating their life when it wasn't in Aquarius. Right. And so they're going to have, and, you know, and it's been what it's, it's trip around the signs is 248 years. Approximately. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can't even talk to anybody who had been in this before. We're all, we're all <laughs> babies true. floating. In, we're all floating in the same boat. We're little babies trying to figure out how to use the oars. Exactly. Exactly. So, do the work on yourself right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, two years prior to now, two and a half years prior to now, Saturn was moving through Aquarius. So we actually had a little bit of insight, you know, Saturn would go in and and just um, be the, be the person in the lead that was Mm -hmm. like, would, would just go in ahead to prepare. Right. Right. That was Saturn in Capricorn. I can get that in the ephemeris. And that was, um, it was uh, last year and the year before. So it usually spends about three years into a Zodiac sign. So yeah, that was like 20, um, 2021, 2022. Um, where are we now? We're in 2023. Well, 2023. <laughs> That's where Saturn met with Jupiter and changed the paradigm from the 200 year cycle from the paradigm. Having That's right. Earth yeah. to air. And that remember- was in 2021. Yeah. Right. And they only stay, they both, both Jupiter and Saturn only stayed in Aquarius for like five seconds, just yeah. like Pluto Ooh. just stayed in Aquarius for just a few short minutes. Um, when did he do that? He, he was in Aquarius from um, inter exit. Oh, I can't remember, but doesn't matter. Um, just earlier this year, it was like in March, mm-hmm. I think when Pluto was in Aquarius. Yeah. So yeah. And then it's back in the summer, and then it went back and yeah. you know, for that, those slow moving planets, that's like no time at all. We yeah. some of us tend to think of cycles in terms of the moon. Well, the moon makes it around every in 28 and a half days. And a half day, so. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It does. Yeah. Pluto was in Aquarius. If, if this matters to you, who's listening, Pluto was in Aquarius from March 23rd to June 11th, 2023. Mm-hmm. And, and then it moved back into Capricorn. And it, again, it stays into Capricorn. Actually, I think I'm off by one day. It's January 20th or January 21st. It's one of those days. I guarantee you guys, vibrations hit before they get there and (laughs) they ring around you. It's like it's being caught in a bell. It's like, you know, wah, 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 wah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's Aquarius too. I want you to think of that. Um, Yeah, it's technology and it's like, let's think outside the box. 
it's getting dark in here. <laughs> it's 1.30, the sun's starting to go down. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's um, yeah, thinking outside the box. It's uh, just unique and um, different ways to do things. Mm -hmm. But think of it too, is that vibration, because it is vibration. Mm -hmm. Anything that creates a vibration, especially um, yourself, like tuning forks and crystal right. bowls and <clears throat> the Tibetan bowls yeah. um, and, and that, and listening, I go on YouTube and um, I just find them, but the solfeggio tones, solfeggio yes. tones, mm -hmm. those tones are fabulous. I just turn and put my TV on and, and just let it play for eight hours while I'm in this room in the office mm -hmm. and, and just let them play in the background. And I do that instead of the old fashioned way of burning sage. I don't burn sage anymore. First off, I can't do that where I live, but the point is, it's like, you know, we don't have to burn sage or Palo Santo. You know, we don't have mm -hmm. to take those plants and destroy them. You can, of course, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not judging, but I just use sound and sound clears your space. And it clears, like if you live in an apartment building, which I do, it can clear a lot of the space around you too. Your right. neighbors might not be happy. I got evicted because of that once. I can guarantee it. <laughs> Why don't you have that weird music on? <laughs> or they don't vibe with you and that that good vibe energy <laughs> the um, lady lift below it ruins me. their day it ruins it ruins, horrible, it ruined them it's yeah, a horrible she, day you know sure it did <laughs> i got evicted <laughs> well well anyways I, I think i think blue light is leading us to a higher heart where That'd things don't helpful. stab our heart as hard we'll find yeah. it easier to soften our own heart and mm -hmm. to move forward with kinder thoughts. And, mm -hmm. you know, I lived in politics for years and I still have a lot of friends that are out playing in that world, but I was listening to something and I just turned it off. I said, I know what the answer to this question is, you know, mm -hmm. and I don't want to harden my heart by listening yeah. to people that are fools. Yeah. And, yeah. I, you know, you're not going to win them back. Your arguments aren't going to win. So, Now's the time for us to do that, not just with with other people we don't agree with. If you don't eat meat, fine. But, you know, you're probably not going to convince a steak eater to not eat steak. You can just stand there, be healthy, be whole, and not argue with them. And maybe yep. decide that's a better way to go about it. Or, mm -hmm. you know, any other of the things that we use to divide us. Like, I, know. I, I don't. I don't do mediumship. I tend to work with things, candles, stones, cards. Mm -hmm. I like things that attach me to what I'm reading. And I would never argue with someone that says, no, all you do is work with your instincts. Don't look at a chart, just live in the world. Mm -hmm. Don't understand how they do it. And that's fine. I don't have to. No, we don't. And that's the, that's the vibe of Aquarius. You know, it's like, it's a humanitarian. It's not personal, but it's it, it can be, of course, because when you have a group of people, right. they're individuals. Right. It's a group of individuals. So that's that's the that's um for a lot of Aquarius, whatever you, you know, whether you are one or whatever, us working with the energy, Aquarius has to remember that. It's just like Aquarius is about the bigger picture and the humanitarian mm -hmm. picture and society and you know groups of people and but aquarius has to remember they're in all those people are individuals mm -hmm. and that's the job and the the challenge for aquarius that's the challenge for aquarius is to recognize that yeah we've got you might have this this feeling of how to do something different or how to do something that's great for you know a larger group of people that or or animals or whatever you 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 know you're drawn to but we mm -hmm. still have to remember that's the chore to remember that there's individuals within the group that that's what makes up a group mm -hmm. so that's something that's like lifting the veil of aquarius is like yeah but look at all the individuals there right right <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and um yeah so that's that's kind of what we're looking forward to. I think 2024 looks brighter than 2023 for a couple of reasons. For numerologically, we're go getting out of a seven year, which is a year of introspection. And there's mm -hmm. just some days where I just don't want to go look inside anymore. I, I think I've had more than enough of that. And so now is the, 
abundance cycle where we take the knowledge we we yeah. get and we share it with people and yeah share yeah. It for ourselves and then and then just to you know a little plug i do have a 2024 forecast out there oh good it's on my it's on my website it is it is a purchase thing cuz i do so much free stuff i have to pay my rent yeah once guys. in a while <laughs> we, do, we do i mean it's lovely to wait for the blue light to come in but when I go to Frost Bank and say, but the blue light came and they go, not into your bank account. <laughs> <laughs> but that is out there. But just as a just as a, a, a nice little um, a touch base. And I have a video about it on my YouTube channel where you can just go and see. I, I, I do a, re, a, a quick mm -hmm. overview of what I talk about in the, the lecture is two hours long. It's just me. I don't know how I did it, but I'm a Gemini. I can talk. <laughs> Gemini can talk. I can talk. We can talk. Um, the no retrograde period. You kind of mentioned this in um, in our pre pre recording right. conversation. The no retrograde time period is starts in because we do have them for a few years right now. We've had them for about three years, like significant amount of time mm -hmm. when there's no planets retrograde. And um, this one is Uranus is the last one to finish his retrograde, which would be right around January twenty sixth. When I look at the big ephemeris, we have to get down to the daily book now. Um, so it's January 27th. So January 27th through the next retrograde won't be till Mercury is retrograde again. So January 27th through March 31st, there are no retrogrades, mm -hmm. 2024. We had something similar in uh, last year and the last year before year and the year before. Long, and we will for a couple of years from now, that time frame right there in the late winter, early, early spring is when there's usually no retrogrades just for a little while because Mercury will start to throw a little wrench in there eventually. Um, he's always the one that shifts it. But how many weeks is that? That's one, that's um, eight, nine weeks. So that's nine weeks with no retrograde. I always talk about that in my forecast too. You guys can keep an eye on that if you mm -hmm. want to know more. And um, that's, you know, I remember back in 2020 when we had this, and the pandemic was just going. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, crap, what's that mean? And it did. Things got really, really big and bad fast in both of those oh, um, time frames when there was no retrogrades. Again, that spring, that late winter, mm -hmm. early spring time frame, 2020, 2021, 2022. We had lots of resurgence of the main thing that we were all focusing on, especially mm -hmm. 2020, 2021. But in your own personal lives, keep an eye on that too, because it's okay to, to grow and to expand. And like you said, like the seven, I'm done introspecting for now. Um, we have that period, eight, nine weeks, we're done introspecting for a little while, but then it comes back again. And the whole point of that is, it's just like, we can't just constantly keep blowing a balloon up. Eventually it's going to pop. You got to tie it off somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, so that's what happens when we, we finally get out of the no retrograde period. Then we get to start to integrate what we've learned, process what we've learned and on and on we go. So the retrogrades are helpful. They're helpful for that. So we can yeah, just but learn the, quick for a little while and no then process. No retrogrades are kind of fun because you can mm -hmm. get the zoomies. Ever yeah. Oh, yeah. that's a great way to put it. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I don't do zoomies no more. <laughs> yeah, well, my cat, my cat doesn't, but we have the year old cat that still zoomies around and re rearranges the carpeting, which is what's most distressing for me, the little area rugs, but <laughs> that's so fun. That's right. My daughter has a kitten and the older cat just sits there and just like, whatever. Boof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He has this permanent face of really you're really doing that. Why? <laughs> That's kind of where we have to, to play. The more mature of us are, but it, it's yeah. a good it's a good time to to feel like your actions aren't going to get compelled to be pulled back by anything. Of course, it yeah. helps if you know your chart, what's out there. But yeah, yeah, and where the planets are at that time, you know what mm -hmm. other what where the other planets are because they're all moving along at a pretty good clip. I mean, Uranus will take a little time to get moving. He'll stay at the 19th degree for a couple of months, which, yeah, almost almost three months. He stays at 19 degrees mm -hmm. of Taurus, even though he goes direct in January. He's, he just, just, it's too far. He doesn't really look like he's moving any. Mm -hmm. And um, but yeah, and we'll have a lot of other we'll have a lot of things that will help us um, move into Aquarius because we'll have Venus and Mars in Aquarius in mm -hmm. February and March time frame. You know, the sun is, of course, in Aquarius in that time frame. 
in that January, February time frame. So we're going to have, um, you know, this Mercury and Venus are always really close to the sun. So they are going to be in, uh, but Mercury's not there, but Mars is. So everybody, we, we have a, a number of planets that are, uh, the faster planets will come in, they'll connect with Pluto, they'll give him a little burst and then move mm-hmm. on. Or those planets, when they connect with Pluto in Aquarius, they'll get their assignments from Pluto. Right. You know, that's really what it looks like when planets like that connect to an outer planet. They just, mm-hmm. they get their assignment, Pluto. They'll only be there for a day or two, but they'll get their assignment from Pluto and move on. Yeah. Start yeah. stirring things up. It's <laughs> going to be interesting times. And instead of closing down, now we're opening up. So if we keep yep. that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. Be open for the new stuff, man. That's work right. with your work with your DNA, whatever that means to you. If you do any of those resequencing, there's all kinds of things out there, mm-hmm. you know. And so this would be a good opportunity to tap into that if that's something that interests you. Right, and you know, just look yeah. at it. Maybe it's going to change the DNA of someone that you have dearly wished their DNA would get changed. <laughs> not I'm not going to comment. Predictive statements, but. You know. <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that. I don't know what to say there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dorothy and I are unfortunately caught in a generation that has a lot of people that we thought were a little strange, but that's okay. We always accepted a little strange in the 70s, in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. They've gotten a whole lot more strange. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's the way it goes. It's okay. Anyhow, so we all have our time. To, blessings to everyone who's been with us. And we're going to go back and. Do you have one more statement or anything you want to say, Dorothy? No, I'm good. Thank you, everybody. I hope this uh, this is a, a really good uh, nine will. candles so to get us going. Ah, so. That one's ah. out. Remember, if you're lighting candles with me, to all, always blow them out unless, you you're, unless you're going to be in the room with them because I almost lost my office to that. So really be careful. And thank Dorothy for being here. Thank you. <clears throat> I thank all of you for joining us. And they'll be eight more of these. So we're looking forward to seeing you. Take care. Bye-bye.